met the Lord. And Jesus told him plainly. And so let's read this story starting in John chapter 3, verse 1, going to verse 17. And again, it's on page 1,649. Now there was a man, a Pharisee, named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher. Who has come from God? For no one can perform the miracles and the signs that you're doing if God were not with you. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. How can a man be born again when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time to the mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and of the spirit. Flesh is birth of flesh, but the spirit is birth of the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it's with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Jesus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe in the speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who has come from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world will be saved through Him. Thank you.
is a witness to God. May 16th, Tom, Shirley Gallagher, and I are in a school <laughs> shopping. And as we were getting ready to check out, Mom was coming. And I saw faces that looked fearful. I turned around and my mother was sliding down the door frame. My initial thought was that it was a fall because there was a step there. But as I went toward her, it was very obvious to me that she had had a stroke. Now, to back up just a little, we had planned to leave on Wednesday morning. Tuesday evening, I heard my name running after her 12 year old dog, Agnes. I got Agnes, got him home. I debated whether I should go, and I decided it's going to rain Thursday. We're all going to stay inside and read and talk to one another. So I went. And even though my name was her, I'm the designated driver. <laughs> God put us together. I am certain. I am certain that He put us together. Had this happened May 16th at 1:30, 15 till 2, she could have been on the road between Troy and Canada. She could have been at home alone. She could have been 30 minutes from Pinehurst Hospital, which is where she <coughs> needed to go. Instead, we were in a small shop in Blowing Rock. According to how you drive, it's either 10 or 15 minutes from the hospital to food. If Shirley were here, she would tell us we made it seven. And everything <coughs> came together. I, I Yeah. 
got Frederick there and those. Frederick thought that he probably could make it on his own. Steve Hudson in the office was not allowed. And they got there in very good time. Mom is very much aware of God in this situation. She doesn't know that I'm up here telling you this. But when I tell, when I told her this story, it was one of the very few times she cried. And it was a cry of emotion because she had absolute proof that God was there. I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. In every situation, don't forget that. Thank you.
didn't see in his own life. There was something there for him to learn. There was something there for him to understand. There was something there that Nicodemus didn't have. Jesus could provide. All who claim to be born again have found their life at some point in life not to be barren, to be empty, before they accept Christ as their Lord and before people have truly committed their hearts to life to Jesus Christ, they're bored with life. They're upset with life. They're sad with life. They're seeing things in a different light. They're saying, this is not what I want. This is not a good thing. They're looking for something new. The new great thrill, the new great opportunity is a new drug all of them. Try to weld it together, try to hold it all together. You know what it sounds like when you try to mend a broken bed? 
You melt it down and you recast it. Some way to fix it. You can't solder it, you can't weld it. You melt it down and you recast it. See, when Jesus comes into our lives and we're born again, that conk life that we had before is gone. Jesus takes it and he melts it down. He burns away all the sin. He burns away all the horrible things. He burns away and melts away all the brokenness and the cracks that are in our life. All the things that makes us sound horrible and look horrible. Jesus takes it away. And then the skill of the master will be poured into the message. We're reborn into the mold that he wants to have. And then we sound beautiful again. <coughs> then we sound like the bell should live. It's not religion. It's not education. It's not power, prestige. It's not good morals. They're just hoops to fix our lives. It's just hoops to fix the demons of life. It's just hoops to fix our lives. Jesus was saying, Nicodemus must be melted and remolded. Jesus is saying to us, you must be melted and remolded again. He's saying to Mara and all the family, you must be melted and molded again. You must be melted and molded again. Jesus replied, I assure you, very, very, I say unto you, Truly, this is what it is. Listen, this is the truth. This is the only way. Unless someone is born again can see the kingdom of God. <clears throat> now, it's too late. It lives to the understanding. See, Jesus is talking about spiritual things, folks. He's not talking about physical things. He's not talking about physical opportunities. He's not talking about making signs or, or, or doing great things, walking out, shaking the preacher's hands. He's not talking about any of that. He's talking about giving your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Not giving your life to a religion. Not giving your life to a, a guru. Not giving your life to some person that you want to follow. Not giving your life to the church. Jesus. 